Hey guys, uh, Marco here from Aviero Live CES. Welcome back to the channel. And today we will continue reviewing the fire protection system on the Boeing 737. And uh, today we are going to talk about the system description. And we're going to start with the systems that have uh, fire detection and extinguishing. They are engines, APU, lavatories, and cargo compartments. The engines also have an overheat detection system and the main gear wheel well has a fire detection system but it doesn't have a fire extinguishing system. The cargo compartment has a smoke detection and fire suppression systems. The engine fire protection consists of these systems. We have the engine overheat and fire detection powered by the battery bus and the engine fire extinguishing powered by hot battery bus. Each engine contains two overheat fire detector loops. Each loop provides both fire and overheat detection. As the temperature of a detector increases to a predetermined limit, the detector senses an overheat condition. At higher temperatures, the detector senses a fire condition. Normally, both detector loops must sense a fire or overheat condition to cause an engine overheat or fire alert. The engine overheat light or engine fire switch remains illuminated until the temperature drops below the onset temperature. An overheat detect switch for each engine, labeled A, B, and normal, permits selection of either loop A or B, or both A and B as the active detecting loops. And if you didn't watch the video last week, we talked about these overheat detect switches, so you can go to the link above and you can review that again if you want. The system contains a full monitoring circuit. If one loop fails with the overheat detect switch in normal, that loop is automatically deselected and the remaining loop functions as a single loop detector. There is no flight deck indication of single loop failure. If both loops fail on one engine, the fold light illuminates and the system is inoperative. If the overheat detect switch is positioned to A or B, the system operates as a single loop system. The non-selected loop is not monitored. If the selected loop fails, the fold light illuminates and the system is inoperative. So, now uh, let's talk about what indications we're going to see if we have an engine overheat and an engine fire. As you can read here, the indications for an engine overheat are both master caution lights illuminate, the overheat detect system and shadow light illuminates, and the related engine overheat light illuminates. Now, if we have an engine fire, the indications are the fire warning bell sounds, both master fire warning lights illuminate and the related engine fire switch illuminates. Now, the engine fire extinguisher system consists of two engine fire extinguisher bottles, and this is the actual picture, this is how they look, two engine fire switches, two bottle discharge lights, and an extinguisher test switch. Either or both bottles can be discharged into either engine. The engine fire switches are normally locked down to prevent inadvertent shutdown of an engine. Illumination of an engine fire switch or engine overheat light unlocks the engine fire switch. But remember, the switches may also be unlocked manually. Pulling the engine fire switch up closes both the engine fuel shutoff valve and the spark fuel shutoff valve closes the engine bleed air valve, resulting in loss of wind and the ice to the affected wind and closure of bleed air operated pack valve, trips the generator control relay and breaker, closes the hydraulic fluid shutoff valve, the engine driven hydraulic pump low pressure light is deactivated, disables thrust reverser for the related engine, allows the engine fire switch to be rotated to discharge. Arms one discharge squip on each engine fire extinguisher bottle. Rotating the fire switch electrically fires a squib. 
discharging the extinguishing agent into the related engine. Rotating the switch the other way discharges the remaining bottle. In this engine fire extinguisher schematic, we can see what we just read here. When we rotate the engine fire switch, it electrically fires the squib, and here's the squibs. And you can discharge, in this case, if you turn it left, you can discharge the left uh, fire bottle to this engine, for example. And if you turn it to the right, you will fire the squib, and then you can discharge the right fire bottle into the same engine. The left or right bottle discharge light illuminates a few seconds after the engine fire switch is rotated indicating the bottle has discharged. Now, let's talk about the APU and what we have in the APU. APU fire protection consists of these systems. APU fire detection powered by the battery bus and the APU fire extinguishing powered by the hot battery bus. The APU has a single fire detection loop. Similar to the engine, as the temperature of the detector increases to a predetermined limit, the detector senses a fire condition. The APU fire switch remains illuminated until the temperature of the detector has decreased below the onset temperature. The system contains a full monitoring circuit. If the loop fails, the APU detect enough light illuminates, indicating the APU fire detection system is inoperative. The indications of an APU fire are the fire warning bell sounds, both master fire warning lights illuminate, the APU fire switch illuminates, the APU automatically shoots down, the wheel well APU fire warning horn sounds on the ground only, and the wheel well APU fire warning light flashes. The APU fire extinguisher system consists of one APU fire extinguisher bottle, an APU fire switch, an APU bottle discharge light, and an extinguisher test switch. The APU ground control panel, which you can see here, located in the right main wheel well, also contains an APU fire warning light, an APU bottle discharge switch, an APU fire control handle, and APU horn cutout switch. The APU fire switch is normally locked down to prevent inadvertent shutdown of the APU. Illumination of the APU fire switch unlocks the switch. The switch may also be unlocked manually. Pulling the APU fire switch up provides backup for the automatic shutdown feature, deactivates the fuel solenoid, and closes the APU fuel shutoff valve, closes the APU bleeder valve, closes the APU air inlet door, trips the APU generator control relay and breaker, allows the APU fire switch to be rotated to discharge, arms the APU for extinguisher bottle squib. Rotating the APU fire switch in either direction electrically fires the squib, discharging the extinguisher agent into the APU. The APU bottle discharge light illuminates after a few seconds, indicating the bottle has discharged. Now, what do we have in the main wheel well for fire protection? The main wheel well fire protection consists of fire detection powered by AC transfer bus 2 and battery bus. There is a note here saying the main wheel well has no fire extinguishing system. The nose wheel well does not have a fire detection system. In the main wheel well, we have a single fire detector loop installed. As the temperature of the detector increases to a predetermined limit, the detector senses a fire condition. The wheel well fire warning light remains illuminated until the temperature of the detector has decreased below the onset temperature. The indications for a main wheel well fire are the fire warning bell sounds, both master fire warning lights illuminate, the wheel well fire warning light illuminates. Now let's talk about the cargo compartment fire protection. The cargo fire protection consists of these systems. 
cargo compartment, a smoke detection powered by VC bus 1 and DC bus 2. Cargo compartment fire suppression powered by the hot battery bus. The forward and aft cargo compartments each have smoke detectors in a dual loop configuration. Normally, both detection loops must sense a smoke to cause an alert. In the event of a detector failure, the system can be manually converted to single loop detection through the detect select switch on the cargo fire control panel. In the event of a power failure in one loop, the system automatically converts to single loop detection. The indications of a cargo compartment fire are the fire warning bell sounds, both master fire warning lights illuminate, and the forward and aft cargo fire warning lights illuminate. After the initial indication of a cargo compartment fire, the forward aft cargo fire warning lights can extinguish, remain illuminated, or re-illuminate over the remainder of the flight. If the forward aft cargo fire warning lights re-illuminate, both master fire warning lights also re-illuminate and the fire warning bell sounds. Now let's talk about the cargo compartment fire suppression and you can see two different paragraphs here. They are similar, but then they are not the same. The one in the right side, it refers to airplanes ETOPS approved. ETOPS, as you can read here, is a standard range uh, twin engine operations performance standards. And uh, below it, we have a very simple definition about ETOPS. It's a twin engine aircraft operation in airspace further than one hour from a diversion airport at the one engine in operative cruise speed over water or remote lands. So ETOPS goes uh, way beyond this. It's, this is just uh, for you to have an idea why the difference between the minutes we have in the left paragraph and the minutes we have in the right one. So let's try to compare these two paragraphs. Uh, we start on the left one saying the single fire extinguisher bottle is installed in the air conditioned and mixed bay on the forward wind spar. And you can uh, see and read in the right paragraph, it says two fire extinguisher bottles are installed in the air conditioned and mixed bay on the forward wind spar. Detection of a fire in either the forward or aft compartment will cause the forward or aft cargo fire warning light to illuminate. The extinguisher is armed by pushing the appropriate cargo fire armed switch, which we can see here. Once armed, the system is discharged by pushing the cargo fire discharge switch. So the right side, it says that once armed, the first bottle is discharged by pushing the cargo fire discharge switch. This results in the total discharge of the first bottle contents into the selected compartment. The second bottle discharge is metered to discharge at a reduced flow into the selected compartment. When the cargo fire discharge switch is pushed, an aircraft has a total time of fire suppression of 195 minutes against 75 minutes here, consisting of 180 minutes to land at an airport plus an additional 15 minutes of fire suppression for a missed approach, go around, landing and passenger unloading. Discharge of the second bottle may be disabled if the system is disarmed. Here we can have 75 minutes consisting of fire suppression for 60 minutes of flight time to land at an airport plus an additional 15 minutes of fire suppression for a missed approach, go around, landing and passenger unloading. So you can see the difference between both uh, systems. The cargo fire discharge light illuminates once the bottle is discharged, indicating the fire suppression system has been fully activated. It may take up to 30 seconds for the light to illuminate. So if we go to the ETOPS airplane, the cargo fire discharge light illuminates when a bottle is discharged, indicating the fire suppression system has been fully activated. It may take up to 30 seconds for the light to illuminate. On landing, if the first bottle has discharged, 
and the system remains armed, the second bottle discharge is inhibited. So that's basically the difference between ETOPS airplanes and non-ETOPS airplanes. Now, in the lavatory, we have the following systems. Lavatory smoke detection, lavatory fire extinguishing, heat activated. The smoke detection system monitors for the presence of a smoke. When a smoke is detected, an oral warning sounds, the red status indicator light on the lavatory smoke detector panel illuminates. There is no flight deck indication. When a smoke is no longer present, the system automatically resets. Now, the fire extinguisher system is located beneath the sink area in each lavatory. When a fire is detected, the fire extinguisher operation is automatic. Flight deck has no indication of extinguisher discharge. Okay, so today I wanted to do something different and I'll put eight questions here about all the things we just talked about. So if you guys want to answer the questions in the comment section, that's fine. If you have any doubts about them, please let me know. I will be more than happy to uh, help you. All the answers are here in the presentation we just did, okay? So that's the end of the video for today, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do it now. And don't forget to hit the bell so you will know once we upload a new video. And as always, if you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. So next week, we will be talking about how we do the tests in these systems. We'll use the flight simulator in order to do that. I'm still trying to get used to it, but we'll do it. Guys, take care. Hope to see you next week.